running, screaming, terrified squeals, hordes of feet. It's the apocalypse. You know this music, but science thinks we've got the tempo all wrong. If the apocalypse hits, what would really happen? Would we help each other out and become our best selves? Or would we fall into horribleness and lash out? I mean, sure, there's Lord of the Flies, Walking Dead, and other apocalyptic horror stories, but they're just that, horror stories. In reality, tragedy and disaster bring out more kindness than cruelty. One study said, quote, most people respond positively and generously. For example, in a 1986 study of a theater fire, they found 44% of people didn't even think that the fire was real. In fact, even if they saw smoke, most people took their time escaping the theater and would rather get into groups to escape. It wasn't every human for a human self. On top of that, many went back into the building. What the heck? Studies find that cooperation is inherent to humans, and cooperation breeds benevolence, the idea that both the giver and receiver see a benefit which we'll come back to in a second. What you think will happen in horrible situations is running and screaming. But what actually happens isn't literally fight or flight, but rather, according to studies, a seeking of familiar persons or places. This is definitely what I saw post 9-11. In 2001, everyone called their loved ones. Everybody. Not everyone had cell phones at the time, but students who paid by the minute shared phones with strangers to help each other out. And this is rooted in something called attachment theory. In the 1950s and 60s, two psychologists, Ainsworth and Bowlby, discovered humans crave social attachment. I know, right? They felt children should experience warm, intimate, and continuous relationships to thrive, which was the opposite of what people actually thought at the time. It was a surprise that attachment breeds comfort and happiness, that social interaction keeps us calm. We're getting through this together. And this is reflected anecdotally after disasters way more than antisocial behavior. Sure, panics and negative behavior happen, but it's not like everyone or even a large percentage start being all Game of Thrones. People help each other way more, and lots of reports show this. Post 9-11 and the 7-7 bombings, post tsunami in Asia, even after the most recent attack in Manchester, people band together. Humans volunteer, they donate, they help their fellow humans. After hurricanes Katrina and Sandy, hotels and strangers took in homeless families. Local volunteers came to clean up. People put power strips on sidewalks. Businesses gave free food and neighborhoods held social events to improve morale. After 9-11, homicides in Manhattan dropped by as much as 60%, according to USA Today. What increased? Blood donations. First-time donors increased drastically. After the San Francisco earthquake in 89, blood donation increased 200%. Remember benevolence? Blood donation doesn't just support the receiver, it also gives the donor a sense of doing good, maybe hearkening back to social attachment. And sure, some of this could be anecdotal. There are some people who are antisocial, and you see them on the news. Antisocial societal breakdown gets ratings. People like those stories. But the perpetrators are a tiny subset of the population. Most humans are calm, caring, and want to be with their people. And a recent study supports this even more. When researchers followed 80,000 people through an apocalyptic scenario in a video game, expecting panic and breakdown, they found, quote, most players exhibited pro-social behavior, such as strengthening existing social relationships and forming new ones as the apocalypse set in. Plus, remember, out here in the land of the real, you don't get a second life. There are no one-ups, and they still behaved pro-socially. Their apocalypse was calm and friendly, without a single spiked bat to be seen. Ours probably would be too. Turns out, keep calm and carry on is scientifically accurate. Next time you call your mom after a tragedy, take solace in the fact that you are not alone on so many levels. And look, whether or not the apocalypse happens, people need donations. Will you still get help if you're a donor? Of course you will. What exactly happens to your organs after you give them up, though? Find out everything in this video. Who would you call if you found out an asteroid would destroy Earth next month? What would you do? Let us know in the comments. Please subscribe, like this video, and thank you so much for watching Seeker.